talking about the power of acting. And the, for me, it's kind of a mystery within a power, but however, he's, I remember we were shooting together. We were shooting the Glory Enough for All series. And I didn't have very many scenes for you, and you played the mother of a, of a daughter who had diabetes, and I played the guy who, in theory, you know, cured diabetes. It's going to make her better. However, yeah. And the scene was the mother appears at Banting's office and pleads for a little bit of insulin for the daughter. And I'd been filming for three or four weeks, and I, you know, I was underway, and I knew it was working, and I knew it was working, and I was confident, and whatever. And we shot your half of the scene first, and you unnerved me. You knocked me, not in, intentionally in any way, but what I was seeing across the desk as I sat in for your close-up was so powerful, and every take was so free between take to take, I literally couldn't act for three days. I thought I was a total charlatan after that. <laughs> oh after seeing God. what you did there, the power of it, and yet total flexibility within that, I thought I was a total charlatan. It took about three days to get my confidence back. <laughs> and so it wasn't just what you were doing, but it was the That's power outrageous. that you were somehow unleashing. And I don't know, I'm sure you don't do it intentionally, like unleash power, but it's why I'm fascinated to talk to you about that core. Where do you think it comes from? <laughs> I don't know. You thought you'd leap right in there, did you? You thought you'd start right Let's start at the deep start end of the pool. right at the beginning. Um, well, I, I, I don't know. It, it depends on what it is you're doing, doesn't it? I remember, I, I don't remember the specific details of, I remember that shoot vividly. Um, I don't remember the specific details of, of the scenes particularly, but I certainly remember the one with you. And uh, it seems to me that what she was feeling was that she was fighting for her daughter's life and uh, that that was crucial, you know. Yeah. And, and you were it, you were the target. Um, and I remember the scenes leading up to that that I had shot, as I remember, Eric Till likes to shoot pretty well in sequence when he can for the actor's sake. And so I had shot the other scenes leading up to that. I had shot the scene where I discover she has diabetes, the scenes where I'm looking for a cure, the scenes where I discovered that there was someone who had a cure, and it turned out to be R.H. Thompson who had the cure. And so all my focus was on you and on the necessity uh, to change your mind about this in order for my daughter to live. That's all I really remember about that, except that I knew it was going to be fun because it was you. So crudely put, do you think, how much of that was acting and how much of that was Martha? Stupid question, but I apologize for it. But do you know what I mean? I don't think there's much of a difference between the two. So when Martha is the mother pleading for her daughter's life, Martha is pleading for life? Um, well, no, she is pleading for life. The, the woman that, that Martha's playing, but it's still Martha playing it. And so I only have the resources that I have. And I, I think what happens, and you can answer this as well as I can, I think what happens is that we, we dig down inside ourselves as we're preparing something, and we find the, the things, the touchstones, the things that spring up. I remember when I was playing Desdemona in, in Othello, Desdemona in Othello, um, that I always felt when I began that, that I was on a train. I was getting on a train and I was going to make a journey and that at the end of this journey, it was going to turn out all right. Now, I had some vague idea that there was a play there in which it didn't turn out all right. You know, I mean, I'm not completely stupid. I kind of knew that, and I'd read the play, and I had learned and rehearsed the scenes where it didn't turn out all right. So somewhere in the back of my head, I knew that that was probably inevitable, but my belief system was so strong at the beginning of it that every single night I believed that this night I was going to be able to make it turn out all right. And I remember... In, I'm only bringing that up because I remember in that particular production with that part at a certain point when it was clear that once again 
it wasn't going to turn out all right. I was aware of wearing a new dress. Desdemona was wearing a new dress, which she had had made and put on for her husband, for Othello. Now, there's no text about the fact that I've had a new dress made. I don't think there is. But it, it was, and we, we talked about this during the fittings, that this was a brand new dress. And I remember touching that dress and thinking of that dress as a talisman that was going to make everything all right because he would look at it and not only see that I looked pretty in the dress, but that the dress itself had power um, to change his mind, to make this um, right. inexorable journey not inevitable. And once again, it didn't work. And I remember touching that dress and thinking, but this isn't possible because this dress has power. What's happened to the power of this dress? It has turned itself in on me. And why, why did that seem to me not to be the same thing? It's because there were certain parts of me, Martha, that responded to that, responded to putting on, I suppose from being a little girl, putting on a new dress and, and thinking that then that was going to make everything all right, and then sure. discovering that it didn't. 